let's uh let's get this reaper live plugin host version kicked off here this is something i've been working on for about a week uh, i found a youtube video by tony ostinato which is a wing controller player and he was the inspiration for the just using reaper in general for uh, live performance uh, if you check out his video it's like uh, Reaper live setup WX5 um, and it's it's pretty amazing what he's he was doing uh, with his setup and I, I it really made me want to dig a little bit deeper into what are some other alternative ways of doing this and kind of adding to what he's done and um, making it usable with the newer versions that kind of eliminated some loopholes of muting and soloing tracks. So what he does is uh, basically in my advanced Reaper live plugin host mode, uh, which is soloing tracks uh, or muting and unmuting was his version, but we're using solo now because there's a little bit difference in that. So. Um, Basically in this mode you're just switching through. I got this set up to switch to the next preset with a foot controller. So, um, you know, preset one is set to track one and it just goes through the different tracks. What's nice about that is they're pretty much instantly ready to go. I'll kind of give you an idea here of how fast you can get in advance mode to the next preset. So I'll just do a series of notes on my wing controller here. <laughs> So it's pretty much instantaneous um, switching. Now the problem with this is if you go left to right and we're not flushing, we're keeping all these live, uh, you know, tracks that are just muted or whatever. When we go back through them, it'll pick up where you, whatever you left on with. So we'll see how it's as I go back. It's kind of playing the very last tail bit of it because they're not flush. They're they're always active. But um, say you weren't uh, to do that as you switch and you were just going to go left to right through your song uh, and not come back. This mode is probably the best in terms of performance. So th that's kind of advanced mode. The thing about it that's slower and more involved is you have to edit these custom actions so in advanced mode you gotta like uh, say once you get to this track say it's track four let's use the foot controller and get over there track four um, it's giving a send to track five it's being soloed but that's not by default that's something that you gotta set up in your custom action so let's check out the uh, action list here um, and we'll go down to where the track, custom tracks are set up. So this is advanced mode of these tracks. And we'll go to track four and see what's going on there. Why, why does that do that? Okay, we got unsolo all tracks, select track four, solo tracks. So that just basically arms this one when you get to it through a live configuration linked to this custom action. But it's also going to select track five and solo that one too. So when we do our sends to it, it's also soloed. Even though it's not armed, usually you can't hear it unless it's armed, but in this uh, instance, the solo in place kind of automatically turns on for these. So anything down river uh, that's a send, it doesn't actually need to get armed. Uh, it's automatically armed. So that, that helps to save uh, CPU when we're switching, but that's how you would do that. The more tracks you want to send to, so your MIDI would come in on one track and then you would route it around to the other instrument. So some tracks could just be the MIDI coming in, uh, a MIDI plugin that key splits or does all these things and you can kind of leapfrog from one to the next to the next to do these different um, kind of advanced routing. So that's, these are the only two things that you would have to add. That's why this is advanced mode. It takes a little bit of understanding of custom uh, actions. So you just find select track 5, enter it, and then find solo track and drag it over and then save. So that's why advanced mode is uh, is advanced mode because you got to do a little bit of, of routing stuff here. You can see that on track 8 here it routes to 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it'll actually solo those as we go over to it. Um, and it's sending through our uh, MIDI chords here. 
So you can do some really neat stuff with this MIDI chords. I mean, basically each note can be set to whatever chord or other note or whatever. And, you know, say you have a really tough passage that's hard to do, you could basically just assign it to three notes that are real easy to get to or five notes that are super easy to get to but fly through them because this would transform using zapizimiti um, so that's great uh, that's something that we can really leverage here is those midi plugins and pizmidi has basically a plugin for everything js uh, the included js plugins with reaper also have tons of different ways of routing and uh, altering uh, MIDI CCs and notes and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to leverage the ability to do that um, and send around using this advanced mode. So let's let's get over into live mode before we go to snapshot mode and kind of get an idea of what live mode does. So in this mode, it's like Ableton Live. You select your loop MIDI or a WAV file or whatever you got that's your loop. You right click on these cells and you say fill with selected cell then you trigger them and it'll trigger them uh, based on these bars and kind of keep creating them um, on that track so this one is set see how it's it's triggering the midi but nothing's coming through because this is actually a wind control patch so as we apply a little bit of breath I'm doing that I, I, it's actually playing a loop but uh, my breath is controlling the level of it so you can kind of do some funky things where you would add that into uh, maybe playing and what's kind of neat is as it plays those notes um, it will if it's receiving notes and it'll kind of like I don't know link those with the root note I'll, I'll show you here let's let's get it playing and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about so like I have it set up to these two this is just playing straight this is playing with that that loop going so you kind of see <laughs> Kind of, it kind of syncs it up. I don't know. It, it, it's weird. It's weird to explain. I would say if it's just gonna receive a CC or something, you know, maybe block the notes or something. But that's that's how this live mode works. You know, you trigger your clips, you set it up to like a you know B pad or a triggering pad. I think there's a couple of uh, uh, natively supported controllers that play time by Helgo Boss here supports, but. You get 30 minutes and then it times out. So if you want the full version, you want to do this clip triggering. Uh, it's 20, 20 euros, 20 bucks, whatever, uh, to Helgo Boss to, to activate this feature of the pl live plugin host. So since we've been through uh, advanced mode and live mode, let's take a look at snapshots. So snapshots is probably like the easiest um, mode to set up presets and stuff for because you just do copy paste save so you would make your configuration you don't have to do anything like advanced where you do your scripts and sh and, uh, and different uh, routings and stuff like that kind of manually this we can save everything so whatever you do here whatever you do in the presets when you save it save a snapshot it'll it'll remember everything that you do. The only thing that it doesn't remember is your track icons and your track colors. So those won't switch per snapshot. That's one of the things that won't switch. But let's check out the speed of snapshots. So like switching back and forth um, is a little bit better than advanced mode because it doesn't, it, it kills that tail. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> Since it's loading up, I mean, it unloads the last one, so it like flushes that out. Whereas advanced mode is left to right, but snapshots you can jump all over the place. But there is a little bit more of a delay when you actually do switch, so advanced mode gives you a little better performance, but snapshot mode gives you more flexibility and ease when making your presets, which is an, uh, a big advantage. <laughs> I mean, it's 
about a half a second, maybe a second. It depends on how many VSTIs you're loading up, how much this is going into RAM, all that kind of thing. So the, the bigger setup you have, the more of a delay and snapshot mode that you're going to receive. So if you have these huge complex things, it may be better to do it in advanced mode if you want to switch quickly. Now, one thing you can also do is lo uh, leverage project tabs. So I got the foot controller also set up to switch um, between these project tabs and uh, it, it happens pretty fast too. So you could use like a combination of different snapshots. You know, I may use like oh, a couple of snapshots here, but then maybe use these project tabs to switch between larger setups. <laughs> It's pretty much instantaneous too. I, I, you know, that's like the fourth mode is just using project tabs to switch back and forth. It's it's a really good way too because they don't load into CPU or RAM unless the project's activated. But you do get those tails, right? See that tail that came through? I wasn't playing anything. I, I, oh, there's another one. See what I'm saying? So if it's not being flushed, which it doesn't when you switch project tabs. Um, you're going to get that little tail if you go from right to left as opposed to left to right through your presets. So like uh, that's, that's the gist of it. I mean, it, it can switch through these really fast and actually keeps up with most of the live plugin hosts that I've tried. And using the snapshot mode, I mean, it couldn't be any easier. You set up what you want, you hit save snapshot, you're good to go. Um, you can also set up toolbars, customize this toolbar with your your custom actions and icons so you just add uh, assign it to a custom action so if you're gonna kinda dig your heels in and use this software to do live performance I would go ahead and learn all about um, making custom actions all that kind of a thing and I would also learn about these different extensions because we're using live configs we're using projects. Uh, you can save project lists kind of as like, um, you know, it would load up these tabs. So you could create different projects and then create those lists of those projects. So those project lists uh, are really nice to create that fourth, uh, fourth realm. So like here you see this is the project list um, thing and we got one, two, three, but you could load this in, you know, open your project list here, which is just tabs of different projects so that helps us really customize that aspect of it and jump back and forth in between these different modes and stuff if you want you may just use one mode uh, you may just use snapshots you may just use one project tab it's up to you um, it's really flexible with these three different I've never seen a live plugin host that can basically get this different of a setup for each one and have those benefits of those different types of setups so you know these are just what I did I you know I kind of combined Sven and Tony's setups to make my advanced mode you know using the live configs instead of just going to the next track and over overcoming some of those things uh, since we can't mute in the same that way that we were able to mute that's what we're doing is we're, we're saying this is how we want it uh, we, these are the things that we need and we're going to work within the bounds of r what Reaper will allow us to do. So I, I would imagine you could, you know, take this and upgrade and improve upon it to, for your particular style. So learning those actions, learning how these extensions work, especially project management and the live configs. Also, if you want to do some uh, custom type of stuff, you got your uh, custom icon uh, um right here this is one custom auto color icon layout thing that I did so I'm saying track uh, master which is this and then I'm say giving it um, an icon I'm saying this is the icon I want it to load up with so normally you can't set this it doesn't give you the icon option like it does here so this is a way we can kind of more customize uh, w using the SWS extensions, just the visual like, aspects of um, colors, icons. I mean, there's all um, different um, NPC layout, TPC layouts. You can do stuff like that. Uh, 
So the, the SWS extensions are good to learn. Learn those. Find the MIDI plugins and stuff with Rhea Pack. Uh, synchronize and browse your packages and all that stuff to find those uh, MIDI plugins or audio plugins that do those routings and those special things you need. I would definitely recommend the Piz, Piz MIDI uh, suite in 64-bit for PC. Um, it basically can do most everything MIDI related that you need um, to do these live setups, but that's about it. I mean, uh, you know, you can make your custom toolbars. One thing about this is it is set up to um, 1920 by 1080 resolution. You know, some of these, uh, some of the stuff is just floating. So to get these different layouts, you can't really do it with just themes. Um, so we're using screen sets and F1 through F5 load these windows, the F1 key, uh, whatever. And then if you want to save these window positions, so you can move this stuff around if you got a different resolution and uh, kind of copy these windows if you like them or make your own um, custom windows by floating stuff and then saving those screen sets using shift F1 or whatever uh, window that it's on. So if it's window 5, it'd be shift F5 and it'll bring up like a, a save menu here. Let me show you. So we hit Shift F5 there and see it brought up save a window screen set number five. You can name it. What is it saving? Um, and I just click them all, all of them, save it. You know, it'll save it in that, all these windows in that position. So you can make your own if it's, you're not in that resolution or, you know, you just want a different, different layouts, more suited to what you're going to do in a live setting, uh, maybe bigger you know, uh, a visual thing. So in live configs, you can click on this and then this like preload. So if you click here, it dr opens up the preload section here and then you can actually like get to the preset. So you don't land right. So you want to get to 10 and you're like, Oh shit, I landed on five. Oh, I landed on nine. All right, there's 10. Now I want to slam it through. You just click on it and it would change that preset. Um, to that preloaded one so you can also set up instead of next last you could have it go through the preloaded ones and then have a button that triggers them through just like we're doing right here so these also work on uh, two finger gestures if you have a mouse pad or whatever in Windows 10 that supports two finger gestures you can kind of scroll through these really quickly um, to get to your different presets um, I would recommend the foot controller just because it's faster you can click right through them, um, and you can keep your hands on your instrument. So uh, that's that's about it. that's about all that there really is to it. Um, you know, it, I w would enjoy to hear what you have to say about it, and uh, if there's any improvements or upgrades, or you think that there is a better way, a faster way, a less um, obtrusive or um, cleaner way of switching presets I would like to know so go ahead and give this a whirl and we'll get this going in, um, to an alpha stage so this is this is the beta so let's get it into alpha and make it really solid I think so far it's uh, beating out a lot of hosts and what it can do which is really surprising so I'm great uh, grateful to have seen Sven and Tony's post and I'm grateful to pass this along as well as some free track icons um, so enjoy and let me know what you think